1978, and I was very much in front of uh, of the whole make Lotus. Colin Chapman, that was the big chief of, of Lotus at that time. Um, he made fantastic cars, also in Formula One, and um, I was very much fond of also the Lotus 7. So I decided, in fact, first of all to um, to import that car in 76, um, but then I found out that the car was not homologated, was not accepted in Europe had no homologation. And when I mentioned that, uh, at that time at Caterham, which took over from, from Lotus, then Caterham said, uh, well, I'm sorry, but no, none of the cars uh, we do has a homologation. So you have to find your own way in your country. And um, that's what I did. But, in fact, I didn't come very far, because the Dutch authorities, as well as the other European authorities, said, well, the car is too small, and the petrol tank is too um, dangerous, that the where it was put in, and this is not good, and that is not so. There were a tremendous uh, lot of things which had to alter, so I went back again, to Caterham and said, well, this and this, this, this all has to uh, to be altered, modified. And then I said, well, it's what I said, I'm sorry, uh, but we cannot help you. And at that time I had then, I came to this, let's say, crossroad, and or I stopped with the whole business and said, well, unfortunately, the Lord has no homologation, so we have to stop, or I start making an own Lord with which can be homologated, and that's what I did. And um, after a while, we made a different car, the, the so-called the S8, and after that, a different car again, the D8, and now the GT and the GTO. So yes, slowly we went our own direction, and Caterham went their direction. And so that means now it's totally. To two totally different vehicles. Well, you can say that because of the crisis in uh, in Europe, it is. Um, the whole car industry is more difficult than years before. And that you see also in the small series car manufacturing. On the other hand, um, when other car, small car manufacturers are going bankrupt, that leaves us more market share. And well, by incident, you can say by coincidence, we, we had our new car uh, last year, this year in fact. And this uh, this new car is uh, is uh, has started very well. So that means uh, for us we have no crisis. We have only crisis in delivery time. So that's a good thing. Awesome. It's a big waiting list for this one. Yes, we of course. The point is that we have to start up production. That's what we are doing right now. But that takes some time. And of course, the, the orders for the car are easily made. Mm -hmm. So it means we we got a lot of orders for the car, and now of course we have to work for getting the production started. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that we um, that the car is quite light, uh, around 700 kilos, and the power is quite high with a five-cylinder from Audi, 380 horsepower. So that means that's uh, quite a, a fast car.
especially because it's light, it's very easy to drive. And it's giving you a lot of joy because everything is direct without the assistance of all kind of electronics or uh, hydraulic devices which are helping you braking, uh, steering. Traction control, yes, there is a traction control, but that's more a safety net. Mm -hmm. That means if you are driving at ease on the highway and it starts to rain and you don't want to, uh, to be surprised by a certain loss of traction because you're accelerating, then it's nice to know that there is a traction system. say well the standard is the base and after the base you can say well I'm not interested in any track they use at all so I'm only interested in touring, going on holiday and uh, have a comfortable car where I can pack a lot of uh, luggage etc. So that's a different approach and for that we make a different car. But still, it can be a, a car which is equipped with a lot of, let's say, expensive accessories. But you can also go in the other direction, the more race direction, and then I say, well, I don't care about uh, uh, expensive accessories, but it's more about the most sportive accessories, and that's then the performance car. So the touring car, as for instance, 340 horsepower, is equipped with uh, well, a nice leather interior and uh, <clears throat> having some comfortable, uh, more comfortable uh, dampers uh, uh, or springs. Um, but the race car has, for instance, more, um, let's say, dampers and springs which are harder, more precise, also about the steering, the rack and pinion. Uh, ratio is different, um, more horsepower, 380 horsepower and also the total equipment is more carbon fiber and more direct, less leather, more pure. If they like to, um, to buy a GTO, well, uh, first of all, they, they need to get acquainted with the car so they make a test drive. And then, of course, they, uh, they make a choice of the specifications. And when they say, yes, that's the car I want, then they make a deposit of 50,000 euros. And then they wait for something like one year. And then we make the car, especially for them. Most of the time, they return to have just uh, a, a sit in a new car without his, he's not, re he's then not totally finished but to see if the pedals are right, the seat is right and, uh, and then we can still change let's say the, the dashboard or the pedals or the steering wheel or the seat or whatever, the height of the seat and uh, so we make a uh, step for step we make it ready for the delivery so, well when the car is finished <coughs> Then most of the time we also know what kind of customer it is. Is it a touring customer or is it, a, let's say more or less, that race customer? And what kind of experience does he have? And the experience, depending on the experience, we do a course, a driving course. Well, it is, I think we hope, to, we hope to finish this year 25 cars, next year around 35, 40 cars, etc. So over the years to a maximum, maximum of around about 60 cars a year.